Hey everybody, this is Christian and today I want to take a quick look at the new version 2.16 of Portana, which introduces a new way to manage ingress in Kubernetes. Because in the past it was pretty weird to create ingress objects in Portana, there was a problem that I actually complained a lot about. But Portana is listening to feedback from the community now with the new release. They did a complete rework of their ingress management in Kubernetes and also a bunch of other cool things I quickly want to go through with you. But regardless of the other cool stuff that they just released, the new Ingress feature is absolutely the one that stands out for me because it's solving a big problem I had when I wanted to deploy applications in my clusters with Portana. Like I said in the past, Portana had this system that you needed to enable the Ingress feature in the namespaces first and then you needed to add a host name there that you could then enable in an application deployment. That was really inconvenient because usually if you're running Kubernetes and you're using something like traffic or nginx, um, you want to manage incoming traffic to your applications through ingress objects, yeah, where you can define a trusted SSL certificate and create routes and path definitions, maybe add a prefix and so on. And all this is now possible in the current version and it's much more intuitive to configure. But let me show you that in a bit more detail. So first you will notice that when you upgrade Portana to the latest version, there is a new setting in the clusters setup menu, which is called ingress controllers and this shows all your installed and configured ones that are running on your cluster so it can also detect others than traffic or nginx now as long as they have an ingress class configured portana is showing them here the green check mark tells us if an ingress class is allowed for admins to be used or not. For example, if you don't want your admins to publish certain applications over a specific ingress class, you can disallow the selected one and then they can't create any new ingress rules with that specific class anymore. So that could be pretty useful in larger environments where you have specific ingress classes that are bound to specific IP addresses or you have different configurations on them and you don't want your admins to use all the ingress classes in your cluster so that's also pretty nice to configure now. Uh, but let's also create a new ingress object to just demonstrate how easy it is in the new version of Portana. You can see there is a new menu point called ingresses and that shows all the ingress objects in your cluster. Of course you could do searching and filtering here in this list like you know it from other menus of Portana and you can also create new ones from manifests via the Portana GitOps feature. That is absolutely cool by the way or you can just use the web editor and add your manifest code in here. But what I want to show you is the guided creation of a new ingress via a form because Portana did a lot of great work here to make it as simple as possible for you. And let's assume I'd like to expose a simple test application that I've created in the nginx1 namespace. You probably know I'm always using nginx web servers for these types of demonstrations and when you selected your namespace you can give this ingress a name so I just want to leave it by default here and select one of the ingress classes that we have seen in the clusters setup. So in my case I only have one ingress class defined that is called traffic and then we can continue configuring our other settings like the host name that this ingress should be active for. I'm picking an internal host name of my local domain seal creative.home by the way so this is routed to the load balancer IP address of my Kubernetes cluster and it is picked up by the traffic ingress controller. Uh, by the way, what I'm not showing you here in this demonstration, but you can still do is you can enter additional annotations, of course, if you have any specific configurations that you like to customize, for example, setting TLS options or configuring middlewares in traffic to do forwarding or authentication. In traffic, for instance, this all can be configured via these annotations and parameters, but I guess that should be all fine for you guys when you're using traffic so that shouldn't be new to you. The important thing for me is how it's handling TLS secrets or SSL certificates because you likely want to expose the application with a trusted certificate of course and that is something you need to create somewhere. In this drop down menu Portana will show you all the TLS secrets that are currently existing in the namespace you are creating this ingress object in. Unfortunately there is nothing existing in my case so I first need to create a new TLS certificate but that's pretty nice because then I can show you another great feature of Portana. So let's go to the config maps and secrets menu because uh, they also did a nice update in here. 
You can see currently I don't have any certificate secret created in this Nginx one namespace. So let's create a new one with a form. And we will create a new secret that I call Nginx1 TLS secret in the Nginx1 namespace because that's where we want to create our ingress. We also need to select secret and then we need to specify the type of it as well. So that feature was existing in previous versions of Portana already, but they have expanded these types. Now we can also create a TLS secret in here and that allows us to just upload a certificate file and a certificate key. For this demonstration, I have I haven't created this certificate yet, so let me do that quickly and go in the terminal and create a self-signed certificate that's valid and trusted for my local domain that I want to use as a hostname in the ingress objects. I go over this step pretty quickly because if you're wondering how self-signed certificates are working and how you can create them for your internal network, I've made a complete tutorial video about this topic where I explain how it actually works and what I'm doing here in the terminal in much more detail. So if that's all new to you just watch my other video I will put your link to this in the description and uh, by the way because we are just talking about my other videos if you like this one please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe because that's telling me that you like these shorter update videos of programs and tools that we're using in our home lab like Portana so please let me know what do you think about it and I'll do these kind of videos more in the future. Okay, let's go back to my TLS secret here. If you have created your certificate, you can just upload it here in Portana. You need to upload the certificate file itself and the corresponding private key. You should see the content of the certificates in here in the text values. And when you've done, just save this object and let's go back to the ingress menu. Because when we now click on the reload TLS secrets, you should see our recently created one in the drop down menu now. So I just need to select it. And of course, continue with configuring this ingress object, like selecting a service. So that is what you should have deployed on your cluster before, of course. And also check things like the service port, configure settings like path types or prefixes. In my case, I should be just fine with selecting the root path. So I don't want to change anything in here. And let's just save this and check if we can open the website. You can see it's already working in the terminal here. And when we now switch to the browser, you can see this is a test Nginx web server that I've now exposed via the new ingress feature in Portana. And it also has selected the correct TLS secret. That is the self-signed certificate that we've just uploaded. So you can probably imagine I'm very happy with this change in Portana because it's making ingress management extremely easy now. That actually was a big puzzle piece that was missing in Portana before but of course they also have improved other areas and added some other quality of life features like the git credential support in the past you needed to configure credentials for every deployment separately so now they added this git credentials manager where you just need to configure them once and then select their credentials in all your future deployments comfortably in a drop down menu also pretty cool and they also added other things like a notification log which is very useful they Kubernetes secret types, we just talked about that. I don't want to go through every single item here in that list because if you want to check it out, you can just uh, open the release notes. I've put them in the video description so you can just go there and read them. For me, it is just impressive that Portena listens very carefully to the community feedback and they quickly implement new features that make this product more and more useful, especially when you're using it with Kubernetes. So this is what I just quickly wanted to tell you and if you want to learn more about Portana, for example, check out their new amazing GitOps feature. You can now watch my other video about that. So I will also leave you this in the video description. And thanks everybody for watching. Of course, I will catch you in the next tutorial. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.